Hello again, it's Tim Whalen from Whalen Jazz Lessons, and uh, we're going to start a new series of videos, something I'm going to call Shed With Me. You know, when we practice as jazz musicians, we like to say that we're going into the woodshed, so it's like shedding is the same as practicing. So what Shed With Me will be is we're going to deep dive into a tune, and I'm just going to give you different ways to practice it. So today's tune is going to be Wayne Shorter's Beautiful Waltz, Wildflower. If you stick around later in the video, I'm going to have some great tips for opening up your sense of harmony when you play tunes like this. Wayne Shorter is one of the true genius modern jazz composers. He's one of my favorites, and his compositions, along with Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea, Horace Silver, and several others, they kind of created a blueprint in the 1960s for a style of jazz composition that is still employed today very influential and very revolutionary and it has shaped so much of what has become modern jazz so wildflower is the last track from wayne's classic album on the blue note label called speak no evil which is something you should have in your collection if you don't already it is a must listen it was recorded on christmas eve of 1964 at the famous rudy van gelder studios it features Wayne on tenor saxophone, Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, Herbie Hancock on piano, Ron Carter on bass, and Elvin Jones on drums. And this was right around the time when Wayne would leave Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers and join what would become the second great Miles Davis Quintet. What makes Wayne's writing so appealing to me, and notice I'm using present tense even though we lost him recently, uh, he's still with us, so I, I like thinking of them in the present tense. But he's a master of what I call functional modal harmony. It's essentially, he has this genius way of using modal harmony and modal concepts, but they're also within the framework of still being able to relate chords to each other, like functional harmony. You know, like functional harmony would be a jazz standard, like all the things you are. He has this way of letting things interconnect and a lot of times they're still connected to a key, but it's also this combination of being able to go to all these different places. So he has this amazing ability to connect chords from different tonal areas and relate them. And you'll definitely see that in this tune. So let me play through the tune so you can hear it. So there it is. What a beautiful, what a beautiful piece of music. So you're probably asking yourself, what, what do we do with all this? So let's break it down. I think the first thing that's really important to just say is there's a reason it's so important to know modes and scales. I would learn the modes of the melodic minor scale, the modes of the harmonic minor scale, the modes of the major scale. This is where that stuff comes to life. You know, knowing the Phrygian mode is not necessarily something you need to know when you're playing, um, you know, a standard, a jazz standards. It's just like the three chord of a tune in the key. But something like this, knowing the Phrygian mode is helpful and where to employ it. And the other thing I want to say is when you're practicing tunes, any tunes, but especially tunes like this, limit the vocabulary you're choosing. You're going to see, I'll show you right now, I'm picking specific vocabulary to play inside of 
there's other choices. But when you're trying to learn stuff, really limit what you're working on and stick to it, whether it be just for a practice session or whether it, you know, maybe you stick to it for quite a long time until you really feel like you have it. So that's really important and it'll make things a little less overwhelming. So let's kind of talk about what's going on here. You know, some of this stuff is how it makes sense to me. This is how I see it. That's the only way I can do this because uh, it's me. So here we have the first thing, we're in the key of B flat major. So we start on the one, okay? All right away, we go to this A flat minor seven. So we go from B flat to the A flat. Now, to me, this is related, even though it's not technically a chord in the key of B flat, but it's, it, we have, we have the, a lot of notes, the E flat, the F, the B flat. Um, those are all parts of the key of B flat. So it, it, it moves very nicely to that. Quick side note is actually Herbie actually plays D flat in the in the recording. He goes, but it sounds like Ron a lot of times plays the A flat. So it's and there those two things are kind of related. So A flat minor seven, and then all of a sudden we go to this A seven altered. Well now, this is a five chord of something. And this is what I mean by like functional modal harmony. So he's just set up an A7 and it resolves to D. He goes A7 to D. But it's not a it's not really a D tonic chord. It resolves to D7 sus flat 9 which is Phrygian. But it's the third mode of B flat major. So in a way it's kind of related to B flat. It's almost like a weird tonic resolution. So we got this B flat, kind of the one chord. A flat minor seven, which is just, it's a minor seven on the flat seven. You, you, could, you could say it's borrowed from the key of G flat, maybe, but I still see it as related to, to B flat. But it's certainly, I think, borrowed from G flat. A7, which now says maybe we're going to the key of D because it's the five of D. And then we resolve to this beautiful D Phrygian. We do this again, second line. Now, Wayne changes it to a D7 sharp nine. So it's almost like this bluesy, bluesy thing happening. But that also results, it sounds like a resolution. We're going somewhere, we're going somewhere, and now we've hit that. So it, it, it definitely cap encapsulates that phrase, that eight bar phrase. Uh, it's, it's much, it's another sense of resolution. Then we go to this G sus flat nine, um, which, could indicate we're maybe kind of moving into a borrowed key of E flat possibly, or it's just a pedal point because G also is the relative minor of B flat. But instead of playing minor, we're just kind of doing this Phrygian sound again. And then functional modal harmony, check it out. We do a two chord in the key of B flat. Two five one, two five one in the key of B flat, C minor, thirteen because the thirteen's on the top, to the five of B flat, which is F. Now we do resolve to B flat, but this is an, a great example of why knowing your modes is important. Wayne resolves to a major seven sharp five, but it's still a two five one. There it is if it resolved with a natural fifth, but he go he goes. Sorry. And then he goes down to this A flat major seven, sharp eleven, which is 
uh, if that was a dominant, people would call that a, a backdoor dominant, or I call it a common tone dominant, meaning it shares a lot of the same tones as the key that we're in, which is B flat, but instead of making it dominant, he makes it major. Very common sound. And then we have another functional 2-5-1. F is the five of, of B flat, but now we treat it as a new tonal center. We've got G minor 13 or minor seven, which is the two of F, to the five, which is C, which is the five of F. And now we resolve not to F major, but, but to F minor. And then E7 altered, which is the tritone substitution of B flat seven, E7 altered, B flat 13. What is B flat the five of? E flat major, which is the next chord we start on to, to start the next section. So we got this, uh, if we go to the beginning of that fourth line, G minor 13, F minor nine, E7 alter, tritone sub, it brings us down to E flat. Now he's gonna do the same, now kind of, we're kind of now starting in the key of E flat, because we got the one, the six, but then we go to this. If we're relating it to E flat, it could be, it could be a, a borrowed chord on the four chord. Because A flat is the four of, of E flat, but it's also this kind of related to the to the B flat. So you can see how he's indirectly relating chords to each other by using common tones. By it's almost like he's threading he's threading these things together. But the key of B flat is still kind of a glue for all of it. So here's the beginning of B. Same thing. Losing my pedal here. There we go. Now we're back to B flat again to to um, kind of repeat the second line on, of A. He's also doing a cool thing now. If you listen to the record, he's added a harmony note under the melody. the The first section was. Now he's got, and then he goes, okay, now he repeats the same thing again. This is all kind of mirroring letter A. Here's the third line of B. Same thing, two, five, one to B flat. to the B flat major seven sharp five, but now he makes that a minor seven to E flat seven, which is a two, five, one in the key of So he went from this, let's go to the second, last, second to last line, the G seven sus flat nine. B flat minor seven to E flat seven, which is the five of A flat where we do resolve. And now, now we're kind of in the key of A flat for a minute. It's like a Lydian sound. D flat is the four of A flat. Now that A flat, it's a modal interchange, is now a new sound. And then this is cool. The E flat seven sharp 11 is a tritone substitution for the A7 altered, which is the five of D. Tritone substitutions resolve down a half step to the D7 sharp nine. I mean, that's some beautiful compositional writing. This is, a, this is why people love playing Wayne's music. It's also why people love listening to it. It's a beautiful, simple melody it's uh, got a mood, but it's also very, 
uh, beautifully complex, yet fairly simple in a lot of ways. Incredible. Let's talk about specific scale choices, okay? Here, I'm gonna go through it and we're gonna just talk about what I'm playing over each chord, okay? The first chord is B flat major. I'm just playing the B flat major scale. Play each scale maybe um, uh, up. Sometimes it's nice not to play up to the root, just play up to the seven. Also play it down. But also just spend some time out of time. Just mess around with each of these scales. Mess with intervals. If you want to swing a little bit. It's not even worrying about feel. Just get these scales under your fingers. Take your time with it. Like meditate into it. That's the first chord. The next chord is this A flat minor seven. Now, I'm thinking A flat Dorian. Because this is kind of borrowed from G flat, but it's also, I'm calling it a common, tor common chord minor seven because here's B flat. We have the B flat, the F, the E flat, and the B flat. Now if I play those notes over, it kind of implies Dorian because of this natural 13. So here's the minor 7 chord with those common tones from B flat. The only notes really left are, the, are these two, which have to be in there because that's the minor 3rd and that's the 4. There's a natural four and a minor third on a minor chord. Dorian. B flat. Maybe work on just connecting those two together. Okay. Next chord, A flat seven altered. I'm going to use B flat melodic minor. It's the classic altered scale. Some people call it the diminished whole tone, but B flat melodic minor. B flat, A flat, altered. And then we go to this D sus flat nine, which is D Phrygian, which is the B flat major scale starting on D. Well, you've already been working on the B flat major scale. I'll just change the root. The next uh, line is all the same until we get to the D seven sharp nine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the uh, half whole diminished scale. You could also do like the third degree of B flat harmonic minor. But I'm going to stick with the half whole scale. On the half whole scale, any anything you play within the scale, you can play in minor thirds because it's 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 the diminished chords are minor thirds. So it's really, I'm thinking What am I thinking? Oh, I'm thinking I have a video about this. <laughs> My uh, last video or a few videos ago was about different scale choices. So the, the half whole diminished is a is one that you should know. Okay, the G sus flat nine. That's also a Phrygian mode. Um, we're, we're basically playing the E flat major scale starting on G.
then this 2-5-1 in B flat, we've got C Dorian. Again, B flat major. And then F, 13 flat 9, I'm gonna do the F half hold diminished. B flat major 7 sharp 5, that is the third mode of melodic minor. That is the G melodic minor scale starting on B flat. In context, let's do that from the G sus flat 9. Then we go to A flat Lydian. Again, this is a common tone. We got, here's B flat major scale. It's basically every note of the B flat major scale. But there's an A in the B flat major scale, but because I'm playing A flat, I'm basically, it's B flat major now, and you're just, you're just making that A flatted. So this is, this is why Lydian works. G minor 13 or G minor seven. So we've got G Dorian. And I'm gonna also do the half hold diminished on C. What I was gonna say about diminished earlier is anything you play on a half hold diminished scale, any note of the scale, you can play it up minor third. So you could go. any kind of pattern. Okay, then F minor nine. It's just F Dorian. Which is also loosely related to B flat. That's a very common thing, going one to five. And then E seven altered, which is the F melodic minor scale the F melodic minor scale. Sorry, I went away from my mic. Now, B section, we've got E flat, which is the four, really, it's, it, we're a new tonal center, but it's related to B flat, because the four of B flat is E flat. So here's E flat Lydian. C minor seven, which is just related, because it's all related to B flat. And then, back to this, a, a flat Dorian, the A altered scale. So this is all the same vocabulary. I don't need to play through it again. Okay. Now we've got the two five one um, going to B flat. The uh, the C minor seven. Now we've got B flat minor seven. Does that change? And that's B flat Dorian. E flat seven. We can still think of A flat the same way. We're kind of dealing with A flat Lydian to D flat Lydian. Then we got our A flat minor seven. E flat 13 sharp 11 is the tritone sub of A flat altered. We're gonna use the B flat melodic minor scale starting on E flat because that gives us a dominant seven sharp 11. There's our sharp 11. And then back to the half hole. Okay, <laughs> it's a lot of stuff, but it, it's really some amazing, amazing things here. So let me give you a few different things you could do to practice tunes. You could do this over any tunes. The first thing is something called, it's like a snake exercise. So the idea is as the changes are moving, you're gonna move a note in the harmonic rhythm of the changes, but the note has to fit the chord you're playing and it can either, it, can, it needs to move by a half step or stay the same. A whole step is only a last resort. You're trying to snake through the changes you know, like changes are going like this and you're trying to snake through them to create 
good voice move, voice leading. Um, and it allows you to kind of see where the common tones are. I wrote one down. I, I, I could do them off the top of my head too, but I wanted to do one that you could see visually. So here, I'm gonna do the snake. I'll play some voicings under it too. stay the same Stay the same. You can go up or down, remember. Sharp 11. So mostly half steps, some whole steps. Uh, you could tr now what you could do is you could take that little snake exercise. You could write down a whole bunch for yourself, and now use those notes as destinations to start phrases from and weave in and out of. So like. I'm arriving on the note each time. Whoops, sorry. Okay, so you get the idea. You can use them as like jumping off points. Another thing you can do is something called a continuous scale exercise. So what that is, let's say, let's say we're gonna go, um, I'm gonna take this F and I'm gonna take, I don't know, take this F. This is my, depending on your instrument, you know, obviously I can do a lot because of the piano, but. This is my range, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I'll do quarter notes. I'm gonna play the scale that I'm supposed to play, and no matter where I am, I'm gonna change the notes to fit the next chord I'm playing. And once I get up here, I'm gonna keep going down. Change chord, change notes. Change chord, change notes. And I'm just gonna keep working on this. This isn't about phrasing, it's just about trying to start to see the scales outside of their roots, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna do quarter notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can hear I'm changing the scales.
Uh. Okay, so that, that's one time through. Uh, you could do it as eighth notes. Uh. Notice I'm changing. I'm, I can't talk when I'm playing. I'm changing what I'm supposed to change. Remember where I left off. They might be saying, well, there's a B natural and a D seven sharp nine, the whole half. That's okay. It's good to have a little bit of that, that dissonance. So that's another way. Another thing you can do is try to arrive on the same tone for each chord. So let's say we're going to arrive on all the, the thirds. That can help you also see some uh, um, relations. Another thing, maybe if you're if you're thinking in terms of voicings, you could you could arpeggiate four note voicings as as uh, like four note cells. Let me see. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna do the first first four bars just for time. There's my B flat major nine voicing. So any notes in any order from those four notes. A flat minor, we'll do minor nine. We'll do, um, for um, alter, let's do, and then the sus flat nine. Um, so here we go. Keep going. I'm kind of doing it on the fly. Um, So I'm taking four notes, I was like, Chick, Chick did this all the time. Mulgrew Miller did this a lot. That's just some ways that you can think about this. And then also then just try to try to play through it. But take these things a little bit at a time. Try to just connect the first two bars together and, and then keep keep adding to it. These things take time to do and you have to start somewhere. Try to connect little chunks together. Can you get from that B flat major to the A flat minor seven? Start there and just work on that and see if you can make your way to the end of the first four bars. Because once you've done the first four bars, 
you've done it twice almost because you kind of come back to it later in the tune. He's repeating some things. So once you work it out on one little section, it happens again. So a little bit at a time and just try to connect little things together. I'd also like to just mention some harmonic things that you could do uh, as a pianist or a guitarist. And if you don't play piano, sit down and work on this. Use each scale that I was just talking about as ways to just play harmony and play chords. So like, you know, let's say I'm gonna take two notes in my right hand and three notes in my left. And it's any combination of notes, but the left hand, maybe I'll keep them kind of step and I'm not gonna be too, but I'm gonna do three notes in the right hand, three notes in the left. And I'm just trying to play the scales as chords as they pass. hear the chords even without the roots. That's a great exercise. What that will do as a comping instrument, it'll make your comping more creative, so you're not just playing stock voicings. But remember, Barry Harris said, chords come from scales. So just spend some time with that. That'll open up so many possibilities of what you can do as an accompanist and as a soloist, because that's a you can get some really cool textures doing that. I hope you got something out of this. Um, maybe you didn't, <laughs> but I want to at least try, and you can let me know in the comments if you found any of this helpful. I would love some feedback um, about maybe some other tunes that you'd like me to get into. I definitely like to talk about rhythm changes and the blues, and um, I mean, it's, it's infinite what we could do, but I hope it was helpful, and um, I hope you just have a great day, and keep practicing, and we'll see you next time.